Well, hey everyone, and welcome back. You know, one of the worst things in life is just the fact that we can't always assume that something is what it really is just by looking at it. That sounds kind of weird, but, um, you know, in many forms of science, we have, um, apparent measurements for things, such as the apparent brightness of stars, or, particular to geology, apparent dip. Now, in my last video, I covered strike and dip, so if you need a refresher on what those are, feel free to check it out. Because in this video we'll be talking about a <coughs> excuse me, apparent dip, which uh, pertains particularly to dip and is very prevalent in the real world. Because when we have uh, naturally occurring or man-made uh, features such as cliffs, quarry faces, roads, and uh, railroads um, running through geologic strata, uh, the dip is often obscured because they don't run parallel to the dip. Think of it, dip is always measured from the horizontal, right? So if you have two surfaces, right, the horizontal, but then maybe another road surface or something that's running at a slightly different angle, it's hard to differentiate the two, and you, you may um, end up reading the wrong measurement because you assume the road to be the horizontal. So in many cases, uh, we measure what is not actually the dip of a... Uh, geological strata, and we measure instead the apparent dip. So apparent dip is anything between zero degrees and the angle of actual dip on a strata. So if we've just got another uh, generic block diagram, something that looks kind of like just another triangle. something like that. If we know our true dip is this angle, alpha, then our apparent dip will be anywhere between zero degrees, the horizontal, and the actual angle of dip. So that could be, uh, I don't know, maybe something like up to there. And then when we look at our directional dip, that would look something like that. True dip, and the one on the left is the apparent dip. Now, you can find true dip from your apparent dip quite easily, um, or the angle of true dip, rather, um, but it requires topographic profiles and contour lines. So we're going to dive into a little example here. Let's just say we've got um, any generic surface and we've got three contour lines here. And we'll say that they increment by 100 meters, why not? So this is 100 meters, this is 200 meters, and this is 300 meters. Okay, so let's say we're right off the bat given that this strike is, let's say that the strike is, um, the strike is just north, okay? And of course, strike can be determined. There's really, in no cases where, will there be an apparent strike. Strike is just a cardinal direction, so it should be easy enough to determine just by looking at a bed of strata. Um, so, this is easy enough to just give or find yourself in a problem like this. But if we know that our strike is to the north, well, you recall that the dip is always perpendicular to the strike. So the dip, in this case, would be going to the west, I believe. It's not the end of the world if I don't get that correct. Um, you can check me with the right hand rule if you wish. But let's just say, for the sake of simplicity, we know that the dip is dipping in this direction uh, because we know it's always perpendicular in direction to the strike. 
Okay, so we know the, the direction of the true dip, but let's say the apparent dip is measured to be slightly different, right? Maybe it's measured in this direction. Okay, easy enough. So we get these two arrows with a common origin, and um, both extending in different directions. Now, here's where we do some actual measurement on the topographic profile itself. All right, so I've got with me here my handy-dandy plastic ruler um, that we can use to actually measure the, uh, the lines that I have drawn here in order to get a sense of scale. Uh, you know what, heck, we'll use inches. The scientific community may, uh, may condemn me, but we'll do something a bit gutsy today, why not? So this line is about two, two and a quarter inches. That is the true dip, which once again we know because of, uh, we, because we know the direction of it. And the apparent dip, once again, is going to be, we'll call that three and a half inches. I'm trying to keep the numbers relatively simple for the sake of this example. 3.5 inches. Now, this is an incredibly simple, uh, it's really just a portion of a map. But let's just say that uh, on this map the scale is... Uh, one inch is equal to, I don't know, 500 meters, 500 meters horizontally. Okay, so we know that the true dip travels uh, 2.25 inches, which is, uh, let's see, 500 times 2.25, a quarter of 500 is 125. 1,125 meters horizontally and the apparent dip <coughs> excuse me is 3.5 inches which is uh, 1,750 meters horizontally and now what we can do with this is think about these um, the true dip and the apparent dip as gradients, right? Since we have this, uh, these contour lines that give us elevation, we know that these have changed by 200 meters. Both of them go up to the uh, 300 meter <coughs> contour line. So we can say that that's 200 meters divided by our two numbers. And then we can write these as gradients, which will be incredibly useful. So I'll just plug these into the calculator. 200 divided by 1125 is equal to uh, roughly 0.18 and 200 divided by 1750 is equal to roughly 0.11. We're not being more precise, once again, simply for the sake of this example. Uh, two significant figures should be good. Okay, now I'm going to clear some space here and keep our final gradient numbers. Because here comes an equation. And this equation states that the tangent of the apparent dip, AP, is equal to the tangent of the true tip, dip, TD, times the cosine of any angle, but we're going to call it beta. And what beta is, is it's the angle between these two. And, well, first of all, we don't know that. Um, we're trying to find it in this example. But what it's useful for is in finding the angle of the true dip. Because 
we can measure the direction and the angle of the apparent dip thanks to uh, um, just using methods I discussed in my previous video regarding strike and dip. Um, but we can't find the true dip, um, assuming that there's something obstructing our vision and causing us to read this apparent dip. So we can find the angle and the direction of the apparent dip, but we can only find the direction of the true dip because we know it's always perpendicular to the direction of strike. So if we want to find the actual angle of um, the true dip, then the angle of the true dip is going to be equal to the angle of the apparent dip minus, or wait, no, it's going to be equal to the angle of the apparent dip plus the uh, um, angle beta because the apparent dip is always smaller it's between zero and the true dip. Okay, so this is just plugging stuff in now, the tangent of the apparent dip. So that's the tangent of point one one. The tangent of the true dip, that's the tangent of point one eight. And then just multiply that by the cosine of beta. Okay, so plugging this into the calculator, the tangent of, actually we'll do one more step, the cosine of beta is equal to the tangent of 0.11 divided by the tangent of 0.18. So finally that gives us the cosine of beta is equal to tangent of 0.11 divided by the tangent of 0.18. The cosine of beta is equal to 0.611. So if we want to find the actual angle beta, then we get that beta is equal to Beta is equal to 52.3 degrees. So that is the difference between our um, true dip and our apparent dip in their angles. So you could have you could have previously found the angle of apparent dip simply by uh, using the previous the methods I discussed in the previous video. I'm not going to go through them again in this video. This was mostly to show you how to use apparent dip to, uh, to find your angle of true dip because in the real world there will be plenty of instances in which you can't tell the dip of strata simply by looking at it whether that be due to a natural uh, crossing of maybe a cliffside with some geologic strata or uh, due to the obstruction of man-made features such as roads or whatnot. Um, but yeah, that's basically the process. I guess I'll give a quick rundown of everything to do, just because this this is a relatively lengthy process, and we like simplifying things down. So the steps you're going to take, exactly, just to review. So first and foremost, find your strike. Once again, strike is just a cardinal direction that is pointing in the direction uh, that that is pointing in the direction that the rock is clearly not dipping. Uh, to put it in its most simple terms, and then using using your strike, find direction of true dip. because true dip will always be perpendicular to your strike. 
and then third, uh, you're going to uh, not so much calculate, but rather just find your apparent dip. both direction and angle because you will be using the angle later on. And then fourth, uh, either construct or uh, use a previously existing um, profile of the area you're looking at. Uh, which means you're going to be using a contour map. Construct or use. Which of course if you're in a if you're in a popular area for geologic um, profiling then it shouldn't be hard to uh, find one that already exists. If you're just in the middle of nowhere, just doing some sort of little test on the road outside your house, then um, you're probably not going to find one. And you may have to make your own by taking a few measurements of elevation and strike. So after you've constructed your contour map, uh, measure your lines. And these lines are just following the dip gradient, or not the, excuse me, the dip direction, right? They're just following the dip direction across the map until you reach the end of that, of that strata of interest. So once you've measured those, I'll put this in the same step, just uh, um, calculate the gradients, which is once again just using the contours the measurements of the contours divided by the measurements of the horizontal distance that the dip run. And then finally, once you have these gradients, plug them into the equation. Once again, that is the tangent of the apparent dip is equal to the tangent of the true dip multiplied by the cosine of beta. Put that in a nice little box. And then finally, having cosine of beta, um, well, technically take the inverse cosine of beta or the inverse cosine of the cosine of beta in order to find beta. Um, but once you have beta, just uh, add angle beta to angle of parent dip to find your angle of true dip. And that's it. With that, you have your strike, your direction and angle of your apparent dip, and your direction and angle of your true dip. It can be a lengthy process, and it does require um, different uh, media of representing your geologic strata of interest. But hey, it's just another method of finding dip, and one that is much more accurate to the real world, um, especially in cases where the roads are very, create very large um, obstructions to the actual dip. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, the lesson of this video, not everything is as it seems. And for that reason, we have mathematical methods of finding the truth. The true dip. Uh, guess I'm done blabbering for now. Hopefully this was informative. Otherwise, good review. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see y'all in the next video.